I'm very pleased to introduce our next speaker, Ruby Ochoa. Ms. Ochoa is the president, owner, and founder of Trace Analytics, an A2LA accredited laboratory specializing in compressed air and gas testing for breathing air, industrial, and manufacturing applications worldwide. Uh, I can tell you she really is a leading expert in this topic and has over 35 years of experience in the industry. So with that, uh, take it away, Ruby. Thank you, Rod. Uh, appreciate being here. Great presentation so far. Um, I, do, I just want to give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about here briefly, if I can get this to change. Uh, we're going to be talking about establishing a monitoring program, type of compressed air testing that you can do, the documentation that you need for SQF audits, and just a little bit about trace analytics. Okay, so what do you need to do to set up a monitoring plan? Um, Phil talked about the ISO 8573 purity classes, figuring out, you know, what, what are you going to test for, particles, water, oil, and microorganisms. Um, but what is SQF meaning? What is their intention when they say that you need to monitor the quality of your air? Um, I think what they mean is that you need to make sure that the quality of the air is in a state of control all year round, not just whenever you test it. So uh, how do you get that? How do you create a monitoring program that really gets you that assurance that your air is, is good? all the time. Uh, there's different monitoring plans that uh, our customers use. One is a percentage um, based. Let's say a customer has 50 different points of use. Uh, they come to me and they go, you know what? I don't want to test all 50. Um, I would feel confident if I tested 25% of them. And so that's a percentage base. They would then the following year pick 20, you know, another 25% that are different points of use. They'd be alternating where they're taking these samples. And eventually, perhaps their monitoring plan says that in four years, I'm going to have 100% of all of our points of use tested. Um, the one that I like very much, especially that lines up well with SQF, is that um, you would take samples based on your maintenance schedule. So let's say you change those filters out every six months. Uh, what we would recommend is take a sample right before you change the filters. That gives you your worst case scenario. This is as bad or as dirty as my air got. Hopefully it's still in the, the requirements that you said were necessary for your product. I also suggest taking a sample immediately after just to make sure that the filter isn't damaged, it was placed properly, you know, they didn't change the specs on, on the purchasing department didn't change the specs on your filters, th little things like that. These are all based on experience. These things have happened out in the real world. Um, and if you'll notice, I've mentioned SQF edition eight requirements. That's the current version that came into effect in January. Uh, they've got um, not only compressed air, but other gases like um, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, that also needs to be tested on a routine basis. Um, the minimal uh, plan is where somebody says, you know, I've got some budget restraints. What can I do? Um, and so we suggest take one sample as close to your filtration, main filtration as possible. Take one at the furthest end of your line after point of use filtration, and then one somewhere in the middle. If you've got an old facility um, where it's been added, uh, additional facilities have been added, or additional um, distribution piping is added, you might want to take that into consideration and also make sure you're capturing air that's being distributed through, a, you know, 30, 40 year old piping versus your newer five year old piping. See if there's a difference in the quality. And then I've got that one lonely number. Uh, I do have lots of customers that say, I just need one sample. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think that's really part of a monitoring program. That is, um, 
that's just one data point. What can you what can you learn from one data point once a year? Not much. Um, another aspect of your monitoring program is how frequently do you test? Uh, I think the ideal situation is figure out how many samples you want to take and split it up throughout the year because um, you've got the intake quality that is going to affect the quality of your air. Uh, that changes by season. Um, there was a mention about particles coming in from the intake air. It's not just um, dirt particles, but it's also microorganisms. So is it different in the winter than it is in the heat of the summer? Uh, the other factor is people do things differently in different times of the year. You might have uh, your compressor located where the bay doors are usually open during, like in Austin, uh, you know, starting about right now, March all the way up to Halloween. That's when it usually starts getting cold. But then in the wintertime, boy, those doors come down, people are cold, um, perhaps you're trapping uh, hydrocarbons from the exhaust of vehicles uh, if your intake is located inside. Um, plus your, your delivery trucks, do they leave their, their, um, their trucks running in the winter, you know, things like that. Um, the, uh, so that's what I would recommend is spread them out. Uh, and I don't say, and I don't, and I don't mean to do this forever. Uh, do it for a sufficient amount of time where you have data, where you know that yes, before my filter change, everything's working. Yes, after the filter change, it's working. Or every um, every six months, you know, things. You have enough data to to evaluate that your maintenance is working properly. Your filters are being changed at the correct frequency. Um, and then you make your decision on, okay, based on my results, A, I need to change my filters more frequently, or, hey, they're doing great, no problem. Um, that's the kind of information you can get from a monitoring program. So how do you, you know, how do you test your compressed air system? We've got, uh, we're a laboratory, and that's, that's our business. We have equipment that we either rent or or sell to our customers to take the samples. Uh, and then we offer a variety of analyses uh, depending on what your needs are. We've got your very basic, this one handles the client that says, I just want to take one sample and I want my check mark from SQF. Um, they most likely will get that at this point in the game. Um, say five, 10 years from now, uh, the industry will have changed, more knowledge will have been gained, and perhaps um, mandates for air quality will be established, but right now there isn't. Uh, so one size doesn't fit all. That's why we have a variety of packages that are based on the analysis that we provide, as well as price. So we've got a value package that is a mid-range of ISO 8573 purity classes. Uh, we've got what we call a pro or a baseline or a diagnostic. It's all uh, taking all full ranges of the ISO purity uh, classes that you saw on the various charts. And we are able to provide you with test results. If you select a baseline, you don't have to tell us what you need. We'll tell you what you have. Uh, from that, once you've gathered enough information, uh, made any adjustments as necessary, then you can switch to a pro, which is, okay, Ruby, I need a class 221 for all my direct contacts, and I need a class 243 for my indirect contacts, whatever those those uh, classes are that you select. But uh, let's go on to the next slide, which is uh, for microorganisms. We use um, a sampler that is designed to connect directly to your uh, pressurized lines, whether they be uh, compressed air or nitrogen or any other inert gas. And we're able to provide you with A, the minimum, which is what SQF says, is to do a total plate count. Uh, that will, uh, we can also provide you with counts for bacteria, mold, and yeast, uh, as well as if, if, you, if you want and if it's above your your limits, 
then we can identify it further uh, to determine what type of um, bacteria it is. And then the final step is proving to your SQF auditor that you're uh, monitoring your program. And that's, that's the results that you get from um, an ISO 17025 accredited uh, laboratory. Uh, one of the things that they do uh, state is that you, if you're going to do it external testing, it should be with an ISO 17025 accredited laboratory. Our reports um, provide you particles, water, oil, um, depending on what you picked, it will have the, the purity classes on there. It can have pass or fail, or it can be left blank if you just want a diagnosis uh, or a diagnostic report. Um, and then the flip side of the report gives you all the documentation of where you took the sample, what the pressure was, what the temperature was, um, and who took the sample, and what date the sample was taken, and how long um, those samples were taken. So uh, all of that information is, is on your report and is part of your um, SQF requirement to prove that you are monitoring your program or monitoring your compressed air. We have similar document, of course, for microorganisms. And then the final uh, documentation is that will make your, your SQF auditor feel pretty darn good is uh, that you, you've got documentation that you know what you were doing when you took those samples. So whether you're using a service provider to do it for you or you've got your own in-house people taking samples, we've got an um, online air check academy that has videos on the different pieces of equipment that you need as well as we um, include an exam that they need to take and if once they complete the exam and get a hundred percent they get a certificate stating that they um, are qualified to go ahead and do the testing and that's really about it i mean we, we get like Rod said we're an accredited laboratory. Uh, we use ISO 8573 methods for sampling as well as analysis with some variations. Uh, we've been around for quite a while, since 1989, and uh, we have that great Air Check Academy. We've got customer service team that is all that are all HACCP certified. And um, I guess that ends my presentation. Oh, one last thing. The, um, the last page of our uh, presentation has a bunch of links. Um, the SQF Edition 8 summary has all sorts of uh, references that we pulled from Edition 8 as well as Edition 7 that was related to compressed air. Some of the ones that um, I've noted in my presentation as well as Phil. Um, so that, that might be really useful for you. Um, the other one that I'd like to point out is the risk assessment article that was published by CABP a few years ago. We've uh, done a webinar based on that article, and it includes a checklist that would help you gather all that information that Phil was talking about, about the compressor, about the filtration. I think we even got information in there about the type of piping you've got, and it just takes you all the way through uh, to create a risk assessment on your compressor system. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, to contact me directly.